particular game but let's more importantly look at the context of the whole game and not just what happened in that last second because if Scotland had done some better things in the first half and converted some of those opportunities they had we wouldn't be talking about a controversial try in the 80th minute of the game. Hey, g'day and welcome to Inside Rugby with Mark. I'm a Kiwi rugby fan who's living in beautiful Cancun in Mexico. And in this video, I'm going to be talking about that game. That was the first game this weekend in the Six Nations competition between Scotland and France, played at Murrayfield under a fairly grey looking cloud, but a packed stadium in at Murrayfield to watch their home team take on France. And there was plenty of French supporters in the crowd as well. Now, before the game got underway, we saw a bit of a change to the Scottish lineup. We saw Patterson coming in at fullback and Stain wasn't able to make it. So Rowe moved out to the wing and the back three were Patterson at fullback, Vandermeer on the wing and Rowe on the other wing. And uh, a lot of you said on the community page poll here that France would just get home in this one. And uh, well, let's see what happened. Nick Berry was the referee for this one and that would be a significant statement come later on in this video. So the game got underway and the two teams started to just feel each other out in the first couple of minutes and we saw a bit of a kickathon between Finn Russell and Jalabert and Pinot between each other just trying to test out getting a little bit of territory, getting themselves into the game a little bit and it was a little bit of a dour opening to the game. I always thought that if Scotland had any chance in this game they were going to have to play well early on and try and get some momentum in the game as we saw last weekend against Wales. They were very effective in that first half and putting points on the scoreboard but it also gave them a lot of self-belief and I thought they would have to do that again this weekend and that was going to come through a good forward effort and I saw Daj early on being very prevalent in a lot of different plays and he was obviously up for a big game. Up to the fifth minute in the game we saw Hugh Jones for Scotland go down with what looked like a pretty serious injury. I thought he might have to go off for a minute but he picked himself back up and got back into position. A couple of minutes later on the seventh minute mark, Scotland started to take on a strong attack. They went down the right hand side, the ball went into Ben White and Ben White scappered across for the goal. It was a really good move actually, coming back inside and White was found basically with not many Frenchmen chasing him towards the line. Finn Russell got the conversion and Scotland were out to seven points to nil after just seven minutes. Pretty much from the kickoff, France went on to attack and they started to really use the ball in lots of different phases, but they were more or less going from side to side rather than penetrating too much through the Scottish defence. However, a couple of minutes later, they did get a penalty after exerting that pressure on Scotland. Thomas Ramos came up to take that penalty for France. It was successful. After 11 minutes, France were back to seven points to three. Just a few minutes later in the 14th minute, we saw France really going on a great attack. Fiku got into a break, headed off towards the line, and it looked like he might have a good chance of scoring France's first try in this game. But Van der Verwe was there, did a questionable high tackle on Fiku as he brought him down. The ensuing ruck and more took place. Van der Merwe found himself with the ball. He kicked it a long way down in towards the French territory and got Scotland out of a bit of trouble. On the 18th minute mark, Scotland got a penalty. Instead of Finn Russell taking a kick for goal, Scotland decided to keep the momentum going with several attacks, and they chose to kick the penalty kick down towards the French corner. They got a line out about seven metres out from the French line and started putting a lot of pressure on France. Scotland were playing well at this stage in the game, I thought, and uh, they looked more likely to try and break open this French defence. Two minutes later, there was a penalty infringement from the French. Finn Russell got an opportunity to take a penalty kick for goal. And after 19 minutes, Scotland were up by 10 points to three. And then France really got into this game. I thought they started putting lots of different phases together, but I couldn't stop help thinking that if Anton Dupont was in this team, they'd be making much more forward progress. I'm not a huge fan of Luku, if you haven't worked that out, by the way. And it just seems to me he's very slow from the base of the ruck and the scrums. He's got a technique that kind of delays his pass onto whoever's running on the ball. And it just gives that defence that extra split second to get prepared and to get up in the French faces. And that seemed to be what happening. So there was no surprise to me that France were going more across the field than they were forward. 
and uh, even though they're putting lots of phases together they just weren't really penetrating and so far in the two French games that I've watched up until this point Jalabert hasn't been doing his normal magic stuff I'm not too sure what's going on with him maybe some of it has to do with the service he's getting from Luku he looks a different player when Antoine Dupont is on the inside of him that's probably because Dupont will make anybody look good if he's playing inside but for me that Luku Jalabert component for France at the moment is not working and up until this stage of the game they weren't making any decisive breaks through that Scottish defence. There weren't any strategic kicks over the top from Jalibir and Luku wasn't doing any darting runs from the scrum half position. So in the 27th minute Scotland cleared another French attack from their line and headed on back down into French territory. They put a couple of phases together and France once again infringed from the breakdown. So Scotland got another penalty within kicking range. Finn Russell stood up and we found Scotland after 28 minutes we're out to 13 points to three. But France weren't giving away this game too easy and they went straight back on to attack again. The ball came out to the right hand side. Fiku found himself going through a gap, scored a fantastic try for France and they were back on the scoreboard. It was a very good move from France. And the... So after 31 minutes with that try from Fiku, Thomas Ramos got the conversion over and we found ourselves back to 13 points to 10. We had about seven minutes left in the first half at this stage and Scotland went back onto the attack again and they played very well in these ensuing minutes up to half time I thought they put a lot of pressure on the French they had a couple of scrums scrum after scrum where they were putting more and more pressure on the French but the French defense was actually holding out Scotland couldn't find a way through and it seemed to be a bit of a pattern in this game as the game got a little bit scrappier because each team wasn't able to find an easy way through the opposition and this comes down to either individual brilliance and we were going to see some of that in the second half but it also came down to the tactics that these two teams were deploying and you can't help but think if there was a South African team an All Black team or an Irish team that they would have cracked open both of these defences and been able to put some significant points on the ball but these two teams were kind of wrestling against each other and counting each other out when it came to that attacking phase so leading up to half time there were several scrums in Scotland's advantage they were putting more pressure on but they weren't able to convert that pressure into more points and then on the 37th minute mark we saw Antonio do something pretty stupid he got a yellow card and got sent off El Dejeri came on to replace him and B Biel Biari went off and uh, France were down to 14 men at that stage they were surviving though until half time and they didn't bleed any more points to Scotland. So Scotland would have been a little bit disappointed with that and I'm sure Gregor Townsend brought that up at half time. They should have been able to score some more points at the back end of that first half I thought which would have given them a little bit of a cushion going into the second half but that didn't happen and we had a half time score of 13 points to 10 in favour of Scotland. Now I thought Scotland were pretty good in that first half in different phases of the play. Again, Daj was doing some good work. We saw good work by Turner. He actually went off the field, came back on again. And uh, I thought the Scottish forwards were doing well when they had an opportunity, but they just weren't able to put France away. As far as the backs were going, we saw Tupelotu and we saw Hugh Jones doing some darting runs. But again, the French defence was up to it and uh, in their faces. On the other side, we saw Fiku score that one try. But we didn't see too much of Dante in the first half. And again, as I said, Jalabert and Luku were not having the kind of impact on this game that France need to have them having. It. On a positive note for Scotland in that first half, I thought their line-out was working well. They were getting quite a bit of consistent ball. And the line-out count went ahead in their favour. On the other side, France lost two line-outs in that first half. And Fabian Gaultier should have mentioned that to the boys at halftime that they had to tidy up their set play it wasn't giving them the platform they required to run at this Scottish team the thing with this French team though they only need 30 or 40 percent of ball possession to be dangerous and uh, we saw a little bit more of that in the second half so why don't we talk about that right now as the second half got underway we saw Patterson have a good run again he was playing well I thought in this game he had a couple of consistently good runs in the first half and his coverage at fullback was very good he was in the right place at the right time so a good run out for young Patterson at fullback for Scotland in the beginning of the second half we saw a bit of turnover ball from Scotland not the way that they wanted to start it gave France a little bit of emphasis in the 48th minute that that boy Patterson did a great kick down deep 
into French territory, went into the 22 and Jalabert knocked the ball on and it gave Scotland an opportunity to really get back down onto attack. A minute later, a significant point in the game because we saw Atonio come back from his yellow card. We also saw BL BRE come back on the field and uh, it was a significant point in the game, I thought, when France were back up to 15 men again. On the 49th moment, a sad moment of the game, we saw Gregory Aldrit, the French captain and number eight, go down, which looked like a pretty serious injury to his knee area. We had to wait for the stretcher trolley to come on and take Aldrit from the field. He was looking a little bit brighter, though. As he went from the field, he was waving at the crowd, but not a good scene to see one of France's best players. Up until that stage of the game, he had done 14 tackles and two line breaks from Gregory Audre, so he was one of the French forwards that was playing very well. Bordent came on to replace him. By the time the 50th minute came around, we'd seen Lucu go off and Le Gris came on for France. Immediately we saw a change in the French tactics and also the French speed at the base of the breakdown. I think this young man needs to start every week from France. We'll see what Fabien Gaultier does after this game. But uh, it was continued pressure from France. They forced Scotland into a number of errors, particularly around the scrum time. And you could tell that France were getting a little bit of dominancy in this game around the 50th minute mark. This was not a classical game of rugby, however. There was a lot of handling errors from each side. And by the time we got to the 54th minute mark, nine handling errors to six in favour of France, which was not a tally they wanted to have. And it was through these areas and disruption and also referee intervention around the scrum area that this game didn't have a very good flow to it. It's a bit scrappy and the team seemed to be going from one breakdown situation to another. When there was a break in the game, which there were a few of, it either led to a try or very close to... In the 56th minute, Scotland were down on attack. Jalibur did a uh, offside situation around the 22 it gave Finn Russell a very easy kick for goal he got that over and uh, Scotland kicked out to 16 points to 10 after 56 minutes of the game then the next five minutes of the game were once again pretty scrappy and we went into a phase where there was a bit of kicking backwards and forwards in fact at some stages the the team players just stood stood while their number 10s or their number 15s were kicking the ball back to one another and it didn't really make for a great spectacle. In fact, what it gave us an indication of is that these teams were a bit clueless as to what to do with the ball. They just wanted to seek territory and put the kicks downfield. But it was around the 69th minute when we saw a little bit of individual magic and it came from that man that I've mentioned in my previous videos. The winger, the young winger from France, Biel Biarri, took off down the left-hand side, put a kick over the Scottish defence, reclaimed the ball and went over for a spectacular try. And that's exactly what I talk about in my videos when it comes to France and BL BRE. This guy is a game changer, he's a game winner, and he can create something out of nothing. And it didn't look like there was too much happening down the left side when he went down there on a run. He used his uh, intelligence and speed, regathered the ball, and the Scottish defense were not able to keep up with him on the way to the line. Thomas Ramos got the kick over, and all of a sudden, France, after 70 minutes, we're in the lead of this game by 17 points to 16. Now, unlike a week before when Scotland were trying to hold on to the lead against Wales, they had to chase the game this time and they had to get down into the French territory within the last 10 minutes and try and score a point. Well, they could have got a drop goal, they could have got a penalty, but instead France started to get a little bit of ball and play the game down in the Scottish half, not what Scotland wanted to happen in the last minutes of this game. But in the 76th minute, we saw Scotland infringe again. It gave France a kick opportunity from penalty. Ramos didn't miss it, and he put the score out to 20 points to 16 in favour of France with just four minutes left on the clock. Could Scotland do it? Could they put some pressure on in the last few minutes and get back to win this game? We had to wait and see. So with just two minutes left on the clock, this game really broke open, and we saw a fantastic break from that winger row from Scotland. Uh, who played fullback last weekend. He went on a 50 metre run down towards the French line. It was absolutely fantastic. Unfortunately, he lost the ball in the tackle and uh, it was an opportunity perhaps for Scotland that had gone begging. French got the France got the ball from that, but Finn Russell did something absolutely brilliant, got the ball back for Scotland and started to set up some phases of play for Scotland to get very, very close to the French line in the dying seconds of this game. 
raid after raid from the Scottish forwards got them closer and closer, closer to the line. And that man, Van der Verwe, was in there again looking for a last minute try in the game. And as we all know by now, the last minute of the game was the most exciting and also the most uh, thrilling, I guess, for some fans as Scotland went over the line and uh, apparently the ball was held up. Now, we took a long time to work this one out. The TMO and the referee went backwards and forwards to each other. Neither of them wanted to make a decision on this one. You could feel they were both very nervous and trying to put the decision on the other person. The TMO had several looks at it, rocking and rolling the video footage backwards and forwards so that you and I at home could decide whether we thought it was a try or whether we thought it was held up. Now, Nick Berry on the field at the time made the decision under the heat of the moment that the ball was held up and he explained that to the TMO as we went to watch the video replays. The TMO then interjected and started to indicate that he thought the ball had actually made its way to the ground and he showed several shots of the video with the video rocking and rolling at the point where the ball appeared to be on the ground. Whether the ball was over the line or on the line at that stage, you and I couldn't tell and the referee couldn't tell either. This controversial moment, uh, moment up on the community page for you all to vote on whether you thought this was a try or not. Over 70% of you said you thought it was a try. Um, I think it was too close to call. We couldn't see on that video whether the ball had in fact gone on the line or over the line. That was the contentious issue for me. Nick Berry made a decision on the spot on the field under the pressure of the game in the last seconds of the game and uh, he stood by that decision with the TMO trying to either help him out or disrupt the process. It was a pretty sad end to the game because all the players were standing around waiting for this decision to be made over several minutes and then finally Nick Berry upheld his decision and said that's it game over and France had won the game 20 points to 16. Since then we've seen Gregor Townsend and Finn Russell and every other Scottish human being on the planet say that it was a try and uh, Scotland were robbed of this particular game. I think it was too close to call. The referee has to go with the on-field decision that he made at the time, whether it's right or wrong. And that's... So perhaps France got out of jail with this particular game, but let's more importantly look at the context of the whole game and not just what happened in that last second. Because if Scotland had done some better things in the first half and converted some of those opportunities they had, we wouldn't be talking about a controversial try in the 80th minute of the game. They weren't clinical enough, and this is where Scotland and France at the moment, I think, are missing that world-class level of play within their international game. They're just not able to execute those plays that we see South Africa, the All Blacks and Ireland be able to do week in, week out, that actually put points on the board. And they leave a lot of points on the field, and I felt Scotland did that in the first half in particular. They should have gone into the changing rooms at least with 20 points on the board. They didn't do that, and as a result of that, France had an opportunity to come back with a bit of individual brilliance and steal the game in the second half. As far as France were concerned, I thought, again, a poor game on their behalf. There were no standouts other than BL, Biarri. Fiku had a fairly good game, I thought, for France. But Dante was disappointing, Jalabert was disappointing, Luku was disappointing, Ramos was consistent on the, in the back at fullback, and Damien Pinot had an average OK kind of game. But I think the French forwards did not live up to their expectation and the hype that I gave them because I thought they were going to be better than that. I think Scotland were better in the lineouts and the set pieces. They dominated in the lineouts and were very, very good at getting ball. What they did with that ball was sometimes contentious in terms of not calling the right play. Now, some of that comes down to Finn Russell. He had a pretty good game, I thought, but Scotland weren't able to break through that French defence when they needed to. And it was only through those great plays that we saw from the likes of Rowe and Patterson had a couple of good runs as well, but they didn't get through that French defence on a consistent basis. And if Scotland are going to want to compete with the best rugby teams in the world, they're going to have to be able to do that. So the likes of Hugh Jones and Tupelotto, a lot of people, including myself, give these guys a lot of kudos. They need to go to another level and be able to break through these defences. Now, both of these teams will go away from this game having won one game each in this year's Six Nations, and I think that's a fairly good representation of where they're both at. They're not deserved of two wins at this stage, and uh, they need to go away and rebuild again. So... I would take it that it was a disappointing game of rugby to watch. It was a bit scrappy. It was a bit all over the place. And some of those kicking interchanges were quite boring for the game. 
and it just showed that both teams in that particular stage of the game were a bit clueless on what to do. Scotland need to be able to convert some of this possession that they're winning into points and that's going to help them win some of these games in their defence. While they do get tested by some of these brilliant players is okay. I think that Bielberry was just a brilliant piece of try making genius from him and the Fiku try was a good try as well. So I wouldn't be too harsh. I think last weekend against Wales they were leaking like a sieve. That wasn't the case this weekend from the Scottish defence. I think they were a little bit better. France though, we haven't seen France coming out of third gear, have we, at this year's Six Nations. They seem to be all over the place. They're definitely missing Dupont, but they're missing that spark. They're missing that genius in the back line to be able to give them something really, really credible. I think Dante really needs to step up his game, and we need to see something out of Jalabert and Luku or Ligarek. And I think Ligarek is the guy to stay in this halfback position for France. So they've got two weeks off now. They'll be going back into camp after having a bit of a rest and they're really going to have to do some work, these two teams, because Scotland are going to get mauled by Ireland if they play like this. And France, well, they're going to get beaten by teams like England, I think, even if they carry on playing like this. So they've got a lot of work to do, both of these teams. Let me know in the comments what you thought of the game. Let's not over-focus on that try at the end of the game. Let's talk about the rest of it because I'm interested in your views on who you thought stood out in this game for you, whether they were on the French side or whether they're on the Scottish side. Love to hear from you in the comments. I'm gonna be back with reviews of the other games from this weekend, so stick around, hit the subscribe button, give this video a thumbs up, and uh, stay here on the Inside Rugby Global community. I'd love to have you around. Okay, until next time, stay safe, stay well, everyone. It's time to say adios from beautiful Mexico. See you all again very soon. Bye for now.